this is a great example of their experimenting and trying very new ideas just paying off really well. So I guess one of the things when it comes to how to elevate a game, you gotta be willing to take risks. Nintendo, they're willing to take risks and sometimes do like really ridiculous things. Um, put Luigi in a mansion with a vacuum cleaner or add a map. It's like, this isn't a game that needs a map. They didn't actually need to have a map in this game if they didn't want to. When it comes to interactivity, you basically have like different forms of interactivity. So like you've got um, this kind of arrow is non-interactive and then you got branches and so that's branching interactive so this overworld map is branching interactive and then in the game you've got what's called contained interactivity basically you can do anything within this realm the thing is is that when it comes to figuring out what you can add to a game one of the things that you can look at is where can we make things more interactive this is our scale of interactivity more interactive less interactive and so that's kind of the uh, the basic ideas of interactivity in games. And so one of the things that you can do is that you can go, okay, so I have this stuck in non-interactive, like moving from level to level, I'm gonna move it up to branching interactivity. Know how your medium works and knowing the goals for your story. That's a good way to put it. Like if your goal is to have it be more interactive, that's one thing. If your goal is to have it be uh, like more, hey, we just wanna, tell this idea that people have a little bit of play in, then you might remove interactivity. The third thing was, where else can you take your story? And um, knowing that story is simply uh, like something that happens and that gameplay is story, you can kind of take this and push it pretty far where it's like, okay, so where else can you take your story? That is your game. Gameplay is story. So therefore that could be like, hey, in this story, we are running from a sun that's attacking us. Looking at it from perspective of story, it could be, for example, that, hey, if you die, what if you end up entering this new world? So it's kind of like, what are other stories that you could tell? Charge of a remake of this particular game. What would I add if I could? So if my goal is to say, hey, let's take the original Super Mario Bros and give you more options, more opportunities, which it seems like is a lot of this game because you've got the ability to hold items, to make your way around the map, App, basically making the game have more interactivity throughout I would think of um what are some other options that we could add what are areas that are not interactive that we could add a little bit of flair to so for example it might be that inside of the uh, the castle at the end you get to choose an item that you get for beating the world if you had multiple routes where you could face a different type of boss we got this level here you can approach it from the right side or you can approach it from the top what if both of those approaches changed where you start in the level, but you're still trying to get to the end? It would make it feel more like an interconnected world rather than you're just beating a level. It would make it feel more like you're going from A to B rather than just, oh, like um, you beat the level and now this spot's open. Where else you can take your story knowing that gameplay is story? One of the things that I think about is, is like, okay, so your goal is to save the princess and you're saving these kings. What if whenever you saved a king, what if there was something where they ended up joining your party? And I'm thinking of things, I'm going to say a lot of the things that I'm bringing up would add complexity to the game and there's like time constraints and stuff to consider. So... I think it'd be fair to say it just wouldn't be practical in a lot of these cases, but where else you could take your story. So I, I think about the kings and how you're saving them. You save them and then they have nothing to do for the rest of the game. First castle, it's not a king. Maybe you're not saving a king, but you're saving the hero of an area. And now you can choose between Mario and Luigi and you know, Luigi can jump higher and stuff. And now you're saving this character. That'd be kind of interesting to me if you ended up um, saving different characters who then you could use and gave you different advantages in the game. Probably the most important thing is really just leaning into the vision further. When I think about the best remakes for game. They weren't things that tried to reimagine the vision or what if we changed everything and you can look at, well, what was the goal of this game? And then you just push it even harder. You push it even further. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you're interested in more about that interactivity stuff that I was talking about, those theories earlier on, let me know if you're interested in any videos getting more into a specific game or into a specific topic. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day and take care.